back. This is Dave Vellante with Paul Gillen. This is theCUBE, we're live from MIT, the Information Quality Symposium. Donald George is here. He's the Chief Architect of Prism Communication Systems, former CTO of the state of Georgia. Welcome to theCUBE, Donald. Thank you. So, talk about this conference. Um, what do you think? What are you doing here? What, what are your takeaways? Well, uh, the conference has been good. I, I, the aspects of data quality are core to uh, what I'm presently developing out in the industry for intelligent uh, remote care systems. So when you look at the aspect of what drives uh, patient care, patient outcomes, uh, the analytics is all around data. Data is the core issue. Uh, and, it, and for many of us uh, today, uh, we connect in such a way using our mobile phones to, to uh, connect to our physicians, uh, connect in terms of the cloud computing to see our health, and, and thus more data is being added. Uh, and that data obviously brings about uh, a challenge. Data management in terms of how you make that data actionable and uh, provide the outcomes in terms of seeing patterns that could drive uh, an understanding of the risk of patients. And then uh, for our, the company, uh, PRISM, we look at how do we provide a total care delivery system in the home, that is monitors. Monitors now send data, and thus that data has to be analyzed, and it has to be looked at in terms of looking at the patient uh, from a proactive uh, viewpoint so that we d deliver the best care possible and a proactive care. And, and I, I love this, this whole concept because I think, you know, the smartphone, it, it, this is one, uh, another area where the smartphone really can be a game changer. You know, yeah. In the same way that, uh, that municipalities try to build out these smart traffic systems to monitor traffic by embedding stuff in the roads, it turned out the easiest way to do it was by, by following the smartphones, right. right? So I wonder if we're going to see the same thing happen in the home where the smartphone Transform becomes transformed into a device that may be a heart monitor, it may be a blood pressure monitor, it may be connected to a, a device for taking blood sugar. I mean, is that where you see, is, is that sort of what you see as the hub of, of this uh, in-home network that you envision? And that is the, the direction. If you look at uh, many of the, the uh, news articles that have come out, Paul, you now be s beginning to see another care delivery system. A care delivery system that doesn't require brick and mortar. Uh, you can have, as you stated, your smartphone uh, where you can now look at your uh, blood pressure with a, a monitor that will transmit it to one of what we would provide in our company as an intelligent platform, take that information, begin to see patterns, and send that back to you in a, uh, what we call a visual graph of how your uh, health care or your blood pressure is doing on a day-to-day -day basis or across many months. So they can help you manage your care better. Or, or the healthcare provider can take proactive Absolutely. action and right, say, hey, your, your blood pressure has been, has been elevated for five days, you should double your medication, right? Absolutely, so we see a, a new emerging uh, future of globalization of healthcare. No matter where you are in the world, you will begin to say, you know, can I access my doctor? That won't be even a question after a while. Uh, whether you're using televideo or whether you're being monitored by sensors as small as, as maybe this clip pin, uh, what it does say that you can always get care no matter where you are. And that care can be analyzed in such a way to give you very uh, straightforward advice of what is happening in terms of maybe lifestyle or things that you don't need to do and thus that data is being stored over an extended amount of time to show you the trend is. So we were uh, last month, the Cube was out in San Francisco uh, and GE had an event around the industrial internet. Yeah. They made a big announcement, of course GE in 2011 set up shop in I think San Mateo, California, big software yeah. uh, sh uh, shop to really do the, what some call the internet of things, the internet, uh, Cisco calls it the internet of everything, Paul. Mm -hmm. and, and GE used the term the, the industrial internet, and they have the new commercials now with the bad guy from the Matrix saying, right. you know, and it's really a big healthcare focus. Obviously, GE is very prominent there, but it was clear that they were laying out a long-term vision, uh, and there were some headwinds. 
uh, to that vision. Um, not the least of which were, you know, people are afraid of letting machines, you know, yeah. do all this stuff. So what has to happen, what has to evolve, and what role can PRISM play in terms of closing that gap between the vision and where we are today? Well, of course, we are evolving today in terms of individuals who have been monitored more in the high risk uh, aspect of cardiology. So th that has already sort of been solidified. With a wearable device. That's example, right. Yeah, yeah. Small wearable or you know what we call CEDs or cardiac uh, electronic devices mm -hmm. that are small. So that is, is already in place. What has not uh, been more pervasive is some of the less risk averse uh, aspects of, of uh, care or chronic illness. Like what? Uh, for instance, diabetes. Mm. We, uh, of course, are looking across the span. The impacts of diabetes is in very much younger uh, individuals than we have ever seen before. We're talking about as, as young as 15. Mm. And a lot of that has to do with the obesity uh, children, of course, uh, less exercise, and uh, thus uh, the onset of juvenile diabetes comes into play. Uh, that affects the cardiovascular system. That affects the, the systems uh, in terms of your kidney, your eyes. So what we are looking at is ways where we can either uh, automatically start getting a small amount of blood and having that device generate the outcome of what the blood sugar is, and then transmit it, uh, you know, maybe every day or every two days so we can start to see the trending. And also, here's the behavior, right? Many of the things that we see in healthcare sometimes cannot be solved with a pill. They just can't. What happens is we try to solve it with a pill, you're really not getting at the re root problem. That's why, uh, you know, PRISM has looked at uh, use cases and hypothesized about deterministic type uh, things that affect care because it is both. One is uh, the person is not losing weight. So, so you tell them to go and, and run and that will help their diabetes issue. Uh, what you will see is that the, if the diabetes stays at its current level, you now understand that most likely the uh, individual is not reducing their weight or they're not eating the right regiments of food, uh, less carbs, less sugar. So you begin to take care of the whole patient, not just from the illness, but also start to look at the behavior. Modify the behavior. That's right, because the two work hand in hand. And that's where you're going to see the biggest uh, new innovative uh, developments come is that not only we we look at the illnesses but we start to look at what other things determines the outcome of this patient and diabetes is one where if you have a set clinical guidelines for the patient and also they stay on task in terms of what they should be doing that you can monitor that and give them a graph and also help them to have better outcomes. So talk about the data behind this. You got data, we're talking essentially you know, visualizing the data around an individual, but you got data on a lot of individuals right. across a lot of different diseases and so forth. What do you do with all that data? So what we basically do is stratify that data. Um, many times we have to look at age, race, sex, uh, you know, things that would start. Geography. A lot. Yes, you know, yeah. absolutely. Uh, that will help you scope the, the health risk of a patient. It gives you more of an understanding of what's evolving, as you brought out, maybe it's environment. And it has nothing to do with, you know, I'm eating this or that. Mm. Uh, so to understand the disease and the, the effects of your behavior or your environment helps you to better bring a holistic way of care especially for those who have multiple. Uh, you know, the statistic is that if you look at the aging population from 55 all the way to 80, uh, it's almost two out of five that have, that have multiple diseases. And what does that mean? 
you no longer are tracking just the trend of a patient, let's say, having diabetes, okay? That patient could have a cardiovascular issue. And yes, diabetes is having an impact on that, but now you have to deal with both of them to bring some care that will allow you to lower the risk level. So the data becomes the central point of triggering processes, automating clinical guidelines, because one of the main things that is happening in healthcare, and both of you probably are aware, that even though a doctor or a nurse will look at the analytics, there are things that they're gonna miss on the dashboard. So what we do at PRISM is bring, it, bring in automated guidelines that help look at certain data elements that tie multiple illnesses together to bring the broad perspective of the care that they may have not even looked at. And you surface mm -hmm. those. In That's a way. right. And what happens? It, it brings not only care, but it brings better intervention. Mm -hmm. You catch it before it happens. You can see it trending very clearly. Most of this data is in graphs so that the doctor or the nurse doesn't have to do the speak language of you know, looking at a dashboard and trying to figure out every little column. Uh, you want to make it simplistic. In that respect, you begin to, to engage the patient as well as the physician and the care team. And that's what we want to do. It, you, uh, uh, the, uh, I think we, we would all agree that one of, the, uh, one of the most wasteful aspects of the healthcare system is the office visit now, the time required to set up, going, waiting in the office, uh, waiting for the doctor, and, and very often the visit is not really even needed. Right. Did you have any, uh, any estimate of what could be saved uh, by a, uh, you know, having effective home delivery of these services? Well, you asked a good question. We have, uh, if you take the follow-ups, and to your point, and that's a real area that you could save money and time, and it'd be better served to do a follow-up. An example is uh, when we do telemonitoring of the patient and understand their trends, when that follow-up happens, let's say, in telehealth through video, there's not this prolonged issue that the patient has to come into the, the facility. I mean, some patients commute from 30 minutes to an hour just to do a follow-up that's 15 to 20, less than, than 20 minutes. And then well, they charge, and the, the insurance company has to pay for the office visit. Right, right. And, right. It, and you still don't have quality at that point. Uh, what we see is make the center of care or patient center care at the point of care. That is, whether it's in the home or somewhere else, have the different devices or, or means to access the patient, to monitor and provide that rather than the commuting between A facility and B facility. So we're looking at tremendous cost reduction and also time spent by the medical staff. Uh, if you look at that, when you come in for a follow-up, you got a nurse, you got a physician, you, you, you kind of tie up their time a lot when, when they can also spend some time uh, to fit in another patient. So when we look at remote care and intelligence, you're actually getting to the core of treating that patient because you have the statistics, they're right there where the patient can see it, and also the, the nurse spends less time, and then the follow-up allows the patient to be in their normal care setting, which is significant to patient satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so essentially you're empowering the patient to tap and leverage the system directly. Exactly. As opposed to going through all the red tape. Okay, so we have, we're on this theme of, of data in our healthcare system, and we all know that that system is broken. So we talked to Farzad earlier, um, and he really set forth a pretty powerful and compelling vision um, as to where this uh, country is going with regard to healthcare. Talk a little bit about the, the, the role of data in that vision. So again, data is the core. Uh, the vision that Fazad had mentioned, uh, you know, being a CTO of a state, it, it begins to see many different methods of data, uh, of care delivery, but data being the real uh, viewpoint of how you treat and care for a patient. We have to have information that's shareable uh, between providers and care teams and payers because we definitely look at a surging cost that's 
uh, skyrocketing. Why? Uh, again, we spend a lot of money uh, taking care of individuals, but the statistics show what we get as an outcome, we rank almost 25th. Why is that? Because what is happening, the data is not being shared with the patient, the physician, and the care team. They don't have the same view. They don't see the holistic patient. And so when we look at the, the central focus of where we are is making that data actionable, we have to have data that is clean, that we can drive over a repetitive cycle with feedback to, to make sure that we are cleaning up those inaccuracies in the data. Uh, because when you look at remote patient care, there is not this, this touchy-feely situation where the doctor is really touching you. Uh, and some doctors uh, feel averse to that. But, but the point is the data will tell you uh, with its trending, its capabilities, and as we use big data to help us to begin to look at use cases, uh, in fact, we're looking at one, transition of care. Uh, many would not know that we spend two, $280 billion in this country in terms of uh, having readmissions to the hospital. And what does that mean? That means that you have a whole situation here in which the uh, person who is being discharged, we don't have accurate information to retard the return to the, the, to the hospital within 30 days. So when we look at the whole scale, the data has to be actionable. We have to have data that is, is focused on the patient's care, the outcome, and what we expect ongoing. So we will you know, obviously get into predictive modeling that will help us better manage the patient mm -hmm. care, live a more active life. Keeping them there a day longer might uh, right. make more sense. Uh, continuing on, on a theme we've talked about with some other uh, of our guests today is information sharing. And to make what you're talking about really happen, you need to have a, a robust infrastructure in place for every entity yeah. that's co collecting this information right. to anonymize it and share it with everybody else in the furtherance of the common good. In your, in your experience, how ready are these industries to enable that kind of sharing? Well, I think uh, they are maturing to get to that level. We have a lot of uh, issues in security. You probably heard about breaches that obviously uh, the public uh, fears that somebody get a hold of their uh, information. But as uh, this nation transforms its healthcare system and brings about achieving interoperability with correct data, uh, I think they will feel more relaxed. And thus, once we look at the security issues around access of patient information, I think we will begin to make an accelerated growth in these areas. Because at the heart of it, if an individual today fell out on the street and didn't have a doctor near them, the first thing that's going to happen is when the EMTs come on scene, uh, what is their medical history, right? And if they don't have access to that medical history, they either do nothing or they give them some level of medication for stability. Uh, with sharing of data and the uh, access to that data, if the patient has given that authority, you can see care can be done right at the point of where that patient collapsed. And, and is that part of what you're working on? I mean, that ability to have to carry your medical record with, with you, your full medical record, so that uh, an EMT can can instantly, you know, uh, transmit that data, have have that critical information in a matter of seconds. Is, is this something that you? And that's what we're looking at. Is either by they, you know, they have a bracelet with a code that, you know, the the medical systems must be integrated into that where they have an identifier. And let's say the MT saw the number, they type it into their laptop, boom, they got it, they look at it, they can treat, or the patient has some kind of device that has the information on it where they can plug into the laptop and get it too. Uh, all of those are fraught, obviously, with someone getting access to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, 
uh, let's, let's be somewhat clear. But those are solvable problems. That's right. We, we have the, the same issue in the banking is, uh, industry, yeah. and we're surely going to solve it in healthcare. So, Don, my last question is, as a former CTO, current chief architect, what, 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 what techs excite you these days? What are you looking at? What are you tracking? Well, you know, what, what's really become an uh, interest is uh, more so on the telemonitoring side. That is that when you look at the mobile devices and they're going to get smarter and you have uh, means to actually uh, uh, gather standard data that can be used to help the consumer as well as the patient to keep their health care uh, stable. Uh, the new devices, the uh, M to M, the machine to machine, mm -hmm. you could have a gateway in your home and you have these monitoring devices, small, very small, uh, and thus that will allow, without you even knowing it, that you're being monitored, that if there was an anomaly in your heartbeat, that that would be picked up before you would know it, and thus intervention could be done. So I think there's a, a great new uh, world in terms of how we're gonna deliver care for the future that I think I'm very excited about. It gives more access to individuals to care, and also it is more proactive than we have ever seen before. Yeah, and a lot less, uh, less of a hassle. You know, data is behind this uh, and, and potentially more effective and hopefully much more cost right. effective. Right, and key, you got it, more yeah. cost effective. Yeah. The cost will go down, and that's what we want to, to provide, affordable health care. Mm -hmm. That's the key. All right, Donald George, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Great vision, uh, fantastic meeting you. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap up right after this. Actually, no, we got, we got a surprise guest coming on. Keep it right there. This is theCUBE, right back.